Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience, from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you lead a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey there. Hey there. How are you again? We are so excited as always to be with you. Why? Because you matter. You matter. And if you don't know that, or you're having this self-doubt come up, you don't know how to actually walk into being unleashed and unstoppable. We're here for you. This is what we love bringing to you. And we've got some amazing leadership and neuroscience for you today. Don't we, Alex Leanne? We sure do. (laughs) Dive in. So we're talking today really about being intimate with your results. And we just wanted to share, we were having some pre-conversation ahead of time. And, you know, let's just talk about it. I was mentioning to Alex about um, the quantum realm, because one of the distinctions of leadership is, you know, that we're source and that we're bringing things into existence, right? And we are always creating our reality. If you look at nature, if you look at the whole earth, actually, Um, And you think about anything you see, anything, it all started with a thought. There's not anything that didn't start with a thought other than maybe the mountains, the volcanoes, the oceans, right? Um, But even, even land and animals, we have a tremendous impact and amount of control and ability with, and we're very much about being in alignment with your values there and being in your ethics and your integrity. Integrity is a huge part of leadership. So what we were talking about was our topic today, being intimate with your results. And in the quantum realm, what we understand, limited, granted, um, and it has been around for, for many, many years, the quantum realm, it, it, the study of it, I should say, quantum realm's been around forever. <laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> but um, in the quantum realm, it is not a universe of control. It is a universe of probability where endless possibilities exist. So Alex, like what, how do we tie this together? How mm. do we tie together the trust and surrender of an outcome with being intimate with an outcome or a result. I think let's, let's go back a step and just define or really look at, okay, when we're talking about being intimate with results, what does that look like? Right. And when, I mean, just in life, right. We're, we set goals, we set intentions, we set outcomes, right. We've got desired results that we want to go after, right. Whether it's we wanting to move to a new home, whether or not we want to go somewhere on vacation or we're growing our business and enrolling more clients into our business, right? There's all, there's always kind of a bit of a, an outcome that we're working towards, right? Even yeah. if it, we want to spend more time with our kids, right? There's always some sort of outcome. What's mm. really to look at as well as defining, like getting really clear on what that is, because yeah. we see it all the time, right? Carol, like with our clients, sometimes yeah. even with ourselves, like it's easy yeah. to like, oh, I would like this. I want this, but not being super specific with what that exactly is. Mm-hmm. And happens is you continuously find yourself chasing something because it hasn't been clearly defined. And yes. so yes, the questions I love to ask clients is what does that quote unquote done success look like to you? Like mm-hmm. how do you know when you've increased spending more time with your kids? Because sure, 
right? We want to spend more time with our kids or we want to go on vacation. But what does that really look like, right? Because mm-hmm. people go on vacation and they're still bringing their laptops with them. So yeah. they really created the success of va- of going on vacation that they wanted. And so I see this so much, right? And I'm sure you do care away with your clients. Yes, very much. This like misalignment of like people knowing what they want and it's, it's inside of them, it's in their heart, but they're not clearly articulating it. And I think that's what's really important is the articulation of what it is. That yes. So, I think that's such a key factor and it brings up the neuroscience of it. The neuroscience of it is that our brains operate by pictures that we create for them, you know, and a lot of times, as you all know, we are not creating those conscious pictures. And we take our clients through a process to paint a clear and detailed picture for the brain. We call it vision priming and we do a celebration prime, right? Mm -hmm. It's so important. And, and so that really ties it together in what the intimacy is looking like. Um, you know, being clear and specific because our brains are always working for us, whether we realize it or not. And so many of our decisions are coming out of our subconscious. And this is something we talk about and it's unawares. It's an automated system that our brain is designed to protect. It protects our, our brains and our bodies. And I will say, you know, the research shows that our subconscious is in our bodies as well as our brain. So I think that's an important thing to bring out. But yeah, getting specific. I'm back to you. This is well, so cool. Because as we're talking, like, here's the other thing too, because I've, I've been in quite a few rooms this past week and having this discussion around like being really clear, like what is the result? Like what are you creating, yeah. right? Whether it's in your life, whether it's in your business. And it's, and it's always the question of like, what is that you want? Right. And so asking mm-hmm. people to drop in the chat, right? Like what the result. And one thing I notice is that when I ask for that specificness, people freeze yes. and they kind of go like, Oh, what do I want? Or mm, like, right. So really getting clear on what that is. And that's, that's an alarm. I say alarm. Cause that's the brain keep you safe. Right. Cause now I've asked you yeah. to declare what you want. And there's some like hesitation to using vague words. Like I said before, like saying, well, I just want to spend more time with my family. How much time? Right. right. Because one more time could be one minute, more time could be, well, I want, I actually want a whole afternoon off from work, or I don't want to work on the weekends. I don't want to yeah. work in the evening. Like there's right. There's things like, you know, it, however, when you get asked the question, right, you might not always declare yeah. it. And what I love is a lot of times people will say that sounds scary to declare it. Yes. Right? Like, when it, when you finally say it, because it's one thing about being in your mind, when yeah. you actually now say it out loud and like make setting that intention now that more people have now heard what's inside of your, your head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your brain's going to have a reaction to that oftentimes. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, the, the there's a couple of really important things there that, um, that it's knowing those specifics, like you were saying, talking about them. It's something that comes up a lot. If you think through the lens of, and I know we're always talking about this Pareto principle, Mm -hmm. but um, I'm going to reference a book that 10X is easier than 2X by Dr. Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. And some of the psychology is that we're always going to default to going to the 80%, the easier. We're Mm -hmm. not going to naturally stretch to the 20%. And this is why you and I are out there coaching and helping people because so important to have a mentor and a guide say, Hey, you know, think about dreaming bigger. How are you dreaming bigger? And you made me think about the second part. You made me think about even as a coach and a mentor and a guide, consultant, strategist, you know, all the names we have out there, it's important to, when you're talking to your customers, it's really important that you not just say, I'm going to help you achieve success. Well, what the heck does that mean? right? Um, It means something different to everybody. And so 
thinking about these conversations with each other, what does it mean to you? And I know what it means to me. And Alex Leanne, I know you know what it means to you. And it is evolving. It's never stuck. It's always growing and going to the next level. But knowing that helps us speak to people in a way so that they understand what's specifically possible for them, as well as come in and receive the coaching to be empowered to uncover what it is that they're going to have all this resistance, the 80%. I'm going to default to what's reasonable, what's normal, what's easier, what people have told me is safe, Mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to think about the impossible. So how do we get to the stretch in this? Well, I just want to go back a little bit in my see if I answer this question in a moment in terms of going back to the whole piece of being intimate, right? Mm -hmm. In order to be intimate with your results, you get to have clarity on what that exact result is, right? So whether or not it's the clients that you're working with, right? Or for yourself. And so what happens is where the disconnect will come with the the intimacy with results. And it's just, it's really, it's like, it's knowing your numbers. It's, it's, it's knowing, you know, again, let's use the house, for example, right? Like I want to, you know, I want to buy a new house. Well, okay. How many houses have you looked at in a week, right? You want a new house, but you're not seeing house. You're not going out there seeing houses or you're not creating the time on your calendar, you know, to connect with a, an agent or like whatever it is, even with like time with your kids, you can keep saying, well, I want more time. I want more time. I want more time. When you're, clear on what the intention is. Let's say I want to spend, you know, a certain amount of hours with them more a week. Yeah. Now you set a declaration. Now you send an intention and now you get to be intimate with like, okay, what am I now doing? How am I getting into committed action to mm. create that? And then it becomes data, just like a science experiment of like, okay, yeah, my intention is I want five more hours. Yeah. And then you go through your week. I'm like, okay, I declare last week, let's do five more hours. How much more time do I spend with them this week? Okay. I got like another hour. Fantastic. Now I want to, I'm like, I get to look at creating four more hours. It's you being intimate with your results as you move forward and then really looking at possibilities. So Mm -hmm. when you are setting that intention and you're super intimate with that, it's, it just really keeps you focused because you're like, okay, this is important to me. And now I look at how I schedule my time, where I spend my time. I know what's important to me and I'm creating something and it's so easy to let life happen to you. Right. It's so easy that time takes over versus you being in the driver's seat, like you're, you being in control. And so when you're clear on the intention and sure, if you have a number, it obviously makes things a little bit easier because like it's measurable, but then really being connected to it of like, okay, this is what I'm working towards. And then being open to possibility and why. And so this, this, I think it answers not, maybe not so much this question, Carol, but like the piece before, <laughs> but the quantum piece yes. is that step. So it's already done. You're mm-hmm. going to create that five hours with your kids. Like yes, it's, it's happening. Right. And now it's just stepping into possibility of like, what could that look like? And how, when do, you, how do we actually walk into that? Yeah. yeah. And shifting <laughs> focus, right? Yeah. In creating that versus the default of the negativity or the negativity bias, sorry. And the default of safety, which right. is what used to, it's like, okay, what is, what could this look like? What does this get to look like? And possibility, possibility, possibility. I have a, a story about that, uh, an example of that. And that is um, someone who was tracking their social media time recently. And it turned out to be about four hours a day of scroll. And it was, you know, o- over time, over the long haul, it that quickly turned into 4,000 hours of scroll. Okay. Wow. So, um, you know, looking weekly, monthly, annually, it compounds, it adds up, it goes exponential. And all of a sudden you're at this huge number of hours of something that was unintentional, Mm -hmm. was a distraction to your focus and what we focus on grows. And that's the point of getting intimate with the details of your results. So 
when you set that intention, going back to what, how do we step into the stress of the scariness of setting an intention in, in its specifics and really um, defining success for ourselves and stretching into that? How do we do that? Well, always goes back to the why, right? <laughs> It's yeah. like the why that'll make you cry, right? Go back to the why of why it's important to you in the first place, yeah. right? Otherwise, I know mean, you sort of said it earlier, Carol, why, you know, otherwise you're leading maybe somebody else's expectation of you, right? So yeah. really going back to why it's important, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's fun to set different goals and it's fun to be stretched in different areas. Like that's what makes things fun. And there's, there's gotta be a purpose for it too, right? That's what obviously right. sports private. That's how you're gonna be able to like, um, intercept the fears and that's holding you back because your why is bigger yeah. than, you know, the fears and everything that's holding you back. And so, yeah, it's, it's being really clear of why something is important to you. And, and I think it it's true when it comes to goals, intentions, results is that people will sometimes just say that they want this. And yeah. I know you and I always go deeper, right. And that's the same question. That's why like in a, in a group setting, yeah. for example, group coaching, it's like, what's the result and why is that important to you? Because you just heard that this was a great number to make. Like, no, actually, like, what does it create? I was doing that yeah. this morning in a group and I asked them what becomes possible. So yes. you know, through the seven layers of questions on the other side of that was like, I, someone shared that I, they get to take a vacation for nine days without their computer. Yeah. Yeah. The things that where we're really connecting into our values mm -hmm. and the why and our values are another piece that it's, if you know what your top values are, it makes it so much more simple to get in alignment. And when we're not in alignment is when we will continue to find blockage. Mm -hmm. So we've got this fear of dreaming big and yet there's this why behind it. And we're running into obstacles and we're like not realizing that we're not recognizing what our true values are and we're, we're the brain's keeping us safe because we're just always, you know, hitting this obstacle of what are my values and leaning into that. And, you know, I talk about principles all the time, right? And it's important to be able to walk through defining things for yourself. And one of the things that we have spoken about is the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of your questions. So being able to ask yourself empowering questions and then also daring to dream big, just taking that courage piece and focusing in on that. I love the Pareto principle in this way. And there are some amazing books out there on this, including the one I referenced earlier and also Atomic Habits by James Clear might be the number one book in the world right now still. Um, it's, it's that Pareto principle. It's the 80, 20 rule. So, are you focusing in on the 20% that's going to take you toward the outcomes that you desire? Now, what, how do I know what 80% to cut out or get rid of if I don't really know the true outcome? If the outcome's vague, then my brain's going to be giving me vague results, right? My uh, brain and body, I should say. And the interesting thing about that is, for example, I want to lose weight and I'd like to do it in three weeks. Okay, great. So you drop a couple of pounds at the end of three weeks. Was that your goal? Was that what you really wanted? Did that put you in, you know, the health situation that you really wanted to be in? or wearing the dress to the wedding that you really wanted to go in, whatever it might be for you. Um, it It's something where there wasn't any specificity there and wasn't any intimacy. So I, I think this is incredibly powerful to start to define things for ourselves and start to be really clear 
and look at things through the lens of understanding our why and our values and um, what we focus on grows, right? Yeah. Well, and what you've taught me is not just what you focus on grows, but what you focus on report grows exponentially, right? That's and so right. That yeah. was going to lean into what was coming before a call to action for the listener today is yeah. look at what are some of the things that you have declared that you'd like experience, yeah. like experience or have, or whatever it is. Like right now we're working on 40 hikes before Andrew's 40th birthday. Right. So congratulations. Are, thank you. And we're tracking, right? Like we're, we're, we, and, and here's, what's funny is I'll even lean into this a little bit more. We declared the 40, we knew exactly what we were working towards Yeah, and we were using an app to track, but we weren't writing it down. So the other week we're like, so how many hikes were we at? Like, we're like, well, I think we're around this time, this, this yeah. many. Right? We had like a vague idea, but now we actually know exactly how many, like we're at 20s, we're at 50%. And now we're like, okay, we have this many weeks before the 40th birthday. And we can actually, we get into committed action because we're setting ourselves up for success to reach this 40, this 40, these 40 hikes. Yes. And what happened also last week was because I know, I mean, we've got 20 hikes. And if you do the calculations, that's about, that's about two hikes a week, right? Is looking at what does this get to look like? So when it still gets to be fun and we actually, we get to create this. So last week was the end of ski season. So we actually went skiing, but I, there was a hike around, around like not far from the mountain. And I was yeah. like, Hey, what could it look like? And here, this is a powerful question, right? As Carol said earlier, right? Like look at the questions you're asking yourself, what could it look like? go skiing for the last ski day and then do the hike afterwards. Right. Mm. And it's just like, what could it look like? Like asking that question of what could it look like, right? Training the brain to ask that question. So, you know, it it leans into something earlier you said, Carol, around the trust and surrender is like, what could it look like? What could it look like? So having not only just your declaration, giving yourself a bit of a deadline, because it does get you into committed action, but also being open to the possibility of again, what could it look like if yeah. right to, to go out there and create whatever it is that you want to create. So the, the call to actions right, that I'm getting at here is to be intimate. So write it down. So if it yeah. is, for example, 40 hikes, right? Yeah. Actually keep track of how many you have complete, right? Be, be specific and by right. if you're releasing weight, you know, I would like to release 10 pounds by, you know, the end of May and then yeah. you're intimate and then you track you're like, okay. And you can almost, you can then kind of break it down, which is also another neuro hack, right? Because yeah. you're putting the bite sized chunks of like, okay, if I lose, lose 10 pounds in the next month and a half, well, it's roughly, I mean, it's about two, two pounds a week. Right. And then you can set yourself up and then you're tracking and you're intimate and you're, you're seeing it happen and you're focused. And so talk about the 80, 20 rule. Yeah. Mm-hmm you're, you're really clear on where the efforts get to go. And so you get to ask yourself, right. How am I spending my time today to move this, this, the needle forward on this goal and then being intimate with the progress. And here's the thing is when you see the progress along the way, yes. dopamine, the yes. goal, that, that fuels the motivation to keep taking action. It's a reward for the brain. And I think that yeah. is such a powerful point. And what you're talking about, there's two pr- principles of wealth that we're talking about here that are broad principles. So they obviously apply uh, to much more than just wealth. And um, that's the context I teach them in, but one is Pareto principle. And so in terms of focus, the goal of the Pareto principle then would be to focus in, hone in on your 20% and cut out the 80% of distraction because what we focus on grows, right? It would be letting 20% of your efforts produce 80% of your results. And then the second thing that you mentioned, Alex Leanne, in terms of tracking is Pearson's law. Pearson's law is often used in the field and more commonly used in the field of productivity, but works equally with tracking that 10 pounds. It is what you measure grows and what you measure and report grows exponentially. So it's like a power curve. It shoots up 
the more that you are building in that habit. Third, from the neuroscience perspective, that is wiring a new neural network in your brain that does take a specific amount of time in consistent action over 80%. And as we do that, then not only is a new neural network laid down, but the old one that was limiting us or keeping us stuck or held back snaps away. And that's where it gets really exciting, right? Because these are tools we have to create a reality that we desire to live And we're defining that reality for ourselves. We're intimate with what it looks like and what it means for us. We're visualizing it. We're watching it happen before our very eyes. And this beautiful, amazing brain and body that we have go to work for us and start to put it to work in the background. And you will notice shifts and changes. Um, Man, I can just think of the evidence, Alex Leanne, of when you wanted a house and you started to put these practices into action. You created a house for yourself. (laughs) And, you know, so, and, and our clients receive these kind of results. We receive these kind of results. And I will say on my side, it has been a lot of healing, healing of trauma, very specific things that I have shifted in my life and I now operate in a different way. And in fact, I'm so happy to share. Um, I got up this morning and went out for the very first time ever and um, got on an ultralight air trike. It is a motorcycle with wings, basically. It's like a hang glider that's motorized and it's, it flies like a small plane, but you know, it can go up to those altitudes and all of that, but it's, it's a wind in your face, right? Have a good helmet on. Highly recommend that. (laughs) But I actually got to fly it too, which was super cool. And it was so fun. And, you know, learning the kind of experiences that you want to have in your life and then being able to take the steps to go do them. But also I have to say, we do get to include in this leaving ourselves open to magic and miracles and outcomes being produced in ways that we didn't expect. And those those are the mysterious parts of this fun journey we're on, right? Well, and I think it's the same piece of like, you know, going back to wanting to spend more time with your kids, right? Like the intention is to spend more time with them. And then you're open to what can be created there, right? Like I set an intention to spend more time like socially. And I set the intention, you know, have this many social events, things like that. And all of a sudden, right? Like you get messages, oh, hey, this is happening. And, and right. And I set intention. And so the intention is there. And yes, there's there is some effort and committed action that I get to take on my half to organize and, and create that. And at the same time, the intention was set. And then all of a sudden opportunities also came to me. Yeah. And so it's really that, 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 that thing important. honed in. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's balance of you with your committed action and also yeah. be open to receive because possibilities can then come towards you. And I think that's what you're leaning there. Carol is like, mm-hmm. you get to be intentional with the intention of what it is that you want to create while also being open to possibilities of what also gets to be part of that. And that's what gets to be fun. Yes. Yeah. And I, I really think that's so important the way you brought that up, because when we're thinking about being intimate with our results and what we focus on grows, then, you know, having those definitions in place, operating according to our values and principles that work, immutable laws of nature, right? Uh, just like going up in that plane, uh, you've, you've got to take some certain actions in order to overcome gravity, in order to, you know, sustain flight. And um, the, the point I wanted to bring out, though, is that when we're really clear and we're moving forward with the things that we're wanting to do, then it's interesting the way the flow starts to happen. So we're defining 
and we're leaving open the room and the possibility. And here's really a super important and powerful tip that I have found helpful in my own life and with my clients. It is being able to say no to really good things in order to say yes to the very best things. And I can't tell you in my own journey of, you know, having a tendency to want to overcommit, a busy brain is brain safety. It's not getting you anywhere. It's not productive. It's just the brain keeping you stuck, right? You're busy and yet where are your results? Um, oh, if you're there, I have so been there. And so being able to prioritize and say, you know, where is that 80% of things that are distracting me from the true focus and the true goal here of having 10xing my results, of really going for it in such a huge way, right? It's very powerful, very important to being able to expand our reach, expand our horizons, dream bigger, go for things that we absolutely can create. They exist in the quantum realm. We can step into them. And um, that's been very helpful. Yeah. Well, we are excited for you to take what we've shared with you today to, yes, get into it with your results and, and really create that momentum forward with whatever it is that you want. Right. Yeah. And yeah, we're like, I've really seen this in practice in the last several weeks. And once this gets put into play, like both in my own life and in my clients' lives and like with all the leaders I've been working with, it's unbelievable. The results that have been generated in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I think that is what in using, you know, Pearson's law, like that's, what's really incredible to see is that you really get that exponential growth when you are really intimate with mm -hmm. results. And, and again, it doesn't, it can be anything, absolutely anything related to whatever it is that you want, but to be really super specific in what it is so that it is somewhat timely, you know, and measurable, right. So yeah. you can get that clear picture and then being committed and open to whatever that gets to be created. And I'm just so excited because like I said, I've really seen this in practice in the last couple of weeks. And like when I say, and I'm talking with like hundreds of people and it's been mind blowing to see the, the amazing impact that it's been yeah. creating. And again, just like major shifts and changes, like pretty quickly in people's lives because the intention was really clear and they were yeah. intimate with what they got to create. So I'm excited for the listener. I mean, I mean, we were super excited to record this episode for you yeah. guys today. So yeah. yeah, such a great topic and such a great way to really dive deep. And the truth of it is, it's all about being unleashed and unstoppable. Yeah. Just stop right there and think about being limitless and what that might look like and where are you settling and getting those definitions down that give you that clarity. This has been so fun today, Alex. I've loved this. And I, I'm really excited for what you're going to see in your life. Give us some feedback. We really want to hear if this is impacting you. And um, we're so excited about how many of you are jumping in and listening. And we want to bring you the things that will be absolutely transformative in your life because you matter and you deserve to be unleashed and unstoppable. So Thank ciao so for now. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wally Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.